the last video we did was on two functional groups, halocarbons and alcohols. Don't forget, halocarbons is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, put on a hydrocarbon chain, and they can be put anywhere, anywhere on the chain. The first one, the second, the third, whatever. Alcohols, very important for this chapter. Alcohols, hydroxy group, which is an OH, minus one, and they can be put anywhere on the hydrocarbon chain, okay? Now, we are gonna go over two, possibly three more functional groups for this video. The first one is organic acids. We already went over organic acids. Now, the big deal about organic acids is that KU, and we'll write this down later on, COOH has to come at the end. It can't be anywhere else. And for aldehydes, the functional group has to be at the end. So, halocarbons, fluorine, chlorine, iodine, bromine, anywhere on the hydrocarbon chain, alcohols, anywhere on the hydrocarbon chain, but organic acids and aldehydes must be at the end. So, uh, Roman numeral one was halocarbons, Roman numeral two was alcohols, now let's get into Roman numeral three, which is organic acids. The first thing about organic acids is what do you put on the hydrocarbon chain? You put this on the hydrocarbon chain. Coo, C-O-O-H. We learned this a long time ago in acids and bases. Now, what the structure looks like is this. C, double bonded O on top, O-H. Now, that's what the structure looks like. C, double bonded O, OH, that's KU. Now, this comes into play. If you see an R in front of that, the R stands for any number hydrocarbon chain. So that could stand for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hydrocarbons, uh, 10, 10 carbon chains, all right? with the R right there. So this is KU, you can't miss this one. Now, for number two. Remember at the beginning, the very first video on organic chemistry, the majority of organic substances are symmetrical, so that means they're nonpolar, so that means they don't dissolve in water. Well, this one is very unique. With this KU at the end, it's slightly polar. So we're going to write that down. Organic acids with the KU at the end are slightly polar, which means they can dissolve in polar water. And also, remember regular acids like hydrochloric and sulfuric and nitric acid, they break apart and it's called, they ionize a lot. And when they ionize, remember Arrhenius, he said, if a substance produces H pluses in solution, it's an acid. Well, the more H pluses an acid produces, the stronger it is. These organic acids, they are very weak, so they ionize just a little bit. And we're going to put that down for the next one. Number three. They can ionize just a bit. 
So for number four, that means they're going to be weak acids. So that's number four. And then I'm going to erase this. We'll put down number five. So number five, this is very interesting. The more carbons the organic acid has, the less soluble it gets. It's the same thing with alcohols and the same thing with sugars. The more carbons you put on there, the less soluble they are. So we, are, we don't have to write that down, but what I do want to write down is how to name these. So number five is going to be naming. You drop the E, like in alkanes, and add oic acid. So, to name an organic acid, use the alkanes names, drop the E off, and add oic acid. So the very first one, I'm going to put uh, letter A. The very first one should be methane, but since it's an acid, we're going to drop the E, and now it becomes methanoic acid. Methanoic acid. So meth means one carbon, one carbon, and then we add a coup at the end, but since there's only one carbon, we got to put it right here. So we have a double bond O, O, H. Now, that's only three bonds. We need one more bond, it's got to be an H. So that's the structural formula for methanoic acid. And how is the molecular formula written? H Ku. Remember, you always have to have Ku at the end. H C O O H. That is the molecular formula for methanoic acid. And there's the structural formula. Now, the common name, you really don't have to know, it's called formic acid. And it's in like bug stings, not bees, but other stinging insects inject formic acid into your skin and it gets hot, red, itchy, and it hurts. So that is methanoic acid. Uh, letter B, this is one of the most important acids of all. And since there's going to be two carbons, it's ethane, drop the E, and add oic acid. So for capital letter B, it's going to be ethanoic acid. Okay, so F means two carbons. Remember, you always got to have Ku at the end, so we're going to put a double bonded O, O, H. And then in the front, carb, this first carbon only has one bond, so you need three hydrogens. All right, so there is the molecular formula for ethanoic acid. And the common name you should know is called acetic acid. The molecular formula for ethanoic or acetic acid
CH3COOH. This is the one most used on the chemistry regions of all the organic acids. And don't forget that story I told you about trying to make alcohol and it all turned into vinegar, because this is what I made. This is acetic acid is the acid that's in vinegar. And remember, acids taste sour. Well, vinegar sour. All right, that's ethanoic acid. So what I want you to do, all right, this is for this video, for letter C and D. You are going to build butanoic acid and you're going to give me the structural formula and the molecular formula for butanoic acid. All right? And then for letter D, you are going to produce hexanoic acid. Alright, so those are the first two questions I'm going to give you for this video. Butanoic acid, structural and molecular. Hexanoic acid, structural and molecular. Okay? And basically, that's all you need to know about organic acids. Remember, they're very weak organic acids. They hardly ionize at all. They don't ionize into a lot of H pluses. And for some reason, they don't smell very good. Uh, especially this one. Butanoic acid. Uh, if we were to do this lab and I were to let you smell butanoic acid, butanoic acid smells like a mixture of bad feet and Cheetos all mixed together. And if you sniff that, that's what butanoic acid smells like. Okay? Really kind of bad news. Most of the organic acids smell bad. There's one called butyric acid, which is made from rancid butter. Uh, stearic acid, which is made from rancid meat. They all smell kind of bad. All right? But that's it for organic acids. So the next one we're going to go into, Roman numeral four, will be aldehydes. Now, the easiest way I've found when I tell my classes is to know these functional groups, know some call letters. Like alcohol's call letters would be OH. Halocarbon's call letters would be FCLBRI. Acid's call letters would be CO. Well, the call letters for an aldehyde is CHO, C-H-O. So, for number one. CHO, C-H-O. Now, it's important to remember it's C-H-O, not C-O-H, because O-H would be like an alcohol. What does this look like? Well, first of all, like the organic acids, that CHO got to go at the end. Can't go in the middle of the carbon chain. All right, so here's what it looks like. C, double bonded O, H. And then here, you could have an R for any number carbon chain. So this is at the end. Cho, C, H, O. All right, that is aldehyde. Now, number two. How to name these? Well, remember for organic acids, we drop the E and add oic acid? Well. For alcohols, we drop the E and add OL, 
Well, this one is very close. We're going to drop the E. And add AL. Drop the E and add AL. So, let's go with capital letter A underneath number two. So instead of methane, remember we always use an alkane and then drop the E. So instead of methane, we're going to put an AL at the end. So it's methanal, not methanol. Methanol is an alcohol. Methanal. Methanal. Now, what's the structural formula for methanal? Well, you know by now, meth means one carbon. So there's one carbon. And then we have to have a double bonded O at the top, an H here, and we have three bonds. We need another H here. So the molecular formula is H CHO. And that is methanol. Now I have a story for you because you may know this under a different name. When I was in college, uh, I went to University of Rhode Island and we were in, you have these heavy duty labs. I mean, they're very heavy duty. And we were dissecting a cat. And we had to figure out, we had to cut it open and, and figure out all the, uh, the muscles in the cat. And in those days, they put this liquid in the specimens to preserve them. All right? So, and it smelled terrible. We didn't have any gloves or anything, so I said, I'll, I'll be the first one to uh, dissect it. So I opened it up, and the fumes were terrible. And as I started working in there, trying to separate the muscles and stuff, I noticed that my fingers, the tips of my fingers, you know like when you've been in a swimming pool a long time and they get all wrinkled? That's what they were looking like. And then as I worked a little bit more, all of a sudden my nose started to bleed. And I said, oh, what the heck? That's it for me. So I had three lab partners, and this one girl came over, and the brand new thing back then were contact lenses. And she had contact lenses. And she started working over the cat. Her fingers started to crinkle up, but then she started to blink a lot, and then she started to cry a little bit. We're going, what the heck is going on? Well, what had happened was this. This liquid, methanol, is a, it dries up things to preserve them, all right? It goes in and it gets the water away and it takes the place of the water. Well, what happened is, remember when I had the nosebleed, it dried up my capillaries in my nose so bad it started cracking. That's why I got a nosebleed. Well, take a while, guess what happened to her and her contacts. While she was working over this, this methanol dried up the fluid around her eyes and it like glued the contact lenses to her eyes. So she had to go to the hospital and they had to put saline solution in her eyes to try to peel off the contact lenses. The other name for methanol is formaldehyde and it's a preserving agent like I said. And nowadays, I think they go part alcohol, part formaldehyde. But it still, it smells terrible, and it is a drying agent. That's how it preserves. So that's methanol, common name formaldehyde. There's the structural formula. There's the molecular formula. All right, so capital letter B.
ethanol. And we've done these over and over and over again. So you know eth means two carbons. Double bonded O, H, 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 H. So that's what that looks like. So this would be CH3 Cho. CH3 Cho. That is ethan ale. So what I want you to do is you're going to do C and D. So letter C. You are going to produce pentanale. And don't forget, you need the structural formula and the molecular formula for pentanale. And the other one I want you to make is heptanale. So, you have two organic acids to produce, and you have two aldehydes to produce, all right? So that's organic acids, that's aldehydes, and now we are going to go to something called ketones, which is Roman numeral 5, I believe. Okay, ketones. These are pretty interesting. Uh, the first thing is, remember the call letters. For an alcohol, it's OH. For an acid, it's CU. For an aldehyde, it's CHO. And for this one right here, it's COKE, C-O-C. Those are the call letters. So, now watch what you have to have. This is a little strange one. For this one, you have to have a double bonded O off a middle carbon. It can't be at the end. If the double bonded O was at the end, it would be an aldehyde. So this double bonded O has to be in the middle of the carbon chain. So what that means is, how many carbons do you have to have for the very first ketone. You think about that and we're going to start to name right now. So to name these crazy things, we're going to drop the E like we normally do and we're going to add own like ketone. So the ending has to be own, not one, own. All right. So we're going to put capital letter A underneath. And hopefully you figured out that if the double bonded O has to come off a of middle carbon, the minimum number of carbons we have to have to form a ketone is Three. Three. And so what is the prefix for three? Meth, eth, probe. So what is the name of the first ketone? Drop the E, add own, and so it's this. Pr 
tropanone. That is the name of the first one. And you have to build it. So there's three C's. Don't forget, you got to have a double bonded O off a of middle carbon. There's that. Now, my next question is, there's only one bond going to that carbon. Need three more hydrogens. One, two, three. Look at this middle carbon. Do I need a hydrogen to satisfy that carbon? No, because I have one, two, three, four. I've got four bonds around that carbon already. Three there. So what does the molecular formula look like? CH3, CO, CH3. And there's your coke right in the middle of the carbon chain. So that is propanone. Now, propanone is really symmetrical and ladies you may know this one not by the name propanone but by the name the common name for propanone is this acetone that's the common name and if you do your fingernails Fingernail polish is nonpolar, so when you put it on there and let it dry, you can put your hands underwater and water will not take away the fingernail polish. Well, fingernail polish is nonpolar. This is super symmetrical molecule. This has to be a nonpolar molecule. Acetone is nonpolar, so if you put two nonpolars together, they do mix and it will take the fingernail polish off. The problem is acetone is really really high vapor pressure and it makes you sick to your stomach so that's why if you get fingernail polish remover most of them go acetone free because you don't want acetone in there the vapors will make you sick that's why you can't put on or take off fingernail polish in planes because the air is recirculated so it's illegal to do that all right now that's propanone that's common name acetone remember double bonded O somewhere in the middle all right now I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to give you two to name Letter B. Now watch how I do this. This is what we're going to do together. 2 butanone. Well, what the heck does the 2 stand for? Well, do you remember when you had double and triple bonds for alkenes and alkynes? You had to tell me what carbon the double or triple bond came off of. Same here. But instead of a double or triple bond, that two tells you what carbon the double bonded O comes off of. So this is two butanone. Well, but, four carbons. All right, so let's do this. Those are our four carbons, two butanone off the second carbon. We put a double bonded O. So first carbon needs three hydrogens. Second carbon, we're good, got four bonds. Third carbon, two hydrogens. Fourth carbon, three. So the molecular formula is CH3CO, watch. CH3COC2 
H5. And there's your Coke. You got it? All right, so these ketones, they're pretty interesting. And if you wanted to do something else with this, which you're going to do, we are going to do, well, actually, you are going to do C and D. So I'm going to give you the names. You're going to build a structure, and then you're going to give me the molecular formula for C and D. So that means you'll have two organic acids to build, two aldehydes to build, and two ketones to build. All right, so here we go for C and D. I want you to build three hexanone. All right? For uh, the molecular structure, the molecular structure and then the formula. All right, that's three hexanone, then letter D. Four, nonanone. So, three hexanone and four nonanone, those are the ones I want you to build. Got it? Okay, so, that's going to be it for this video. So this video just explains organic acids, aldehydes, and ketones. Okay? All right, good luck on your six things to build and give me the molecular formula for.